All right, so today I'm going to briefly be going over the Levi Civita symbol and Kronecker delta. Now, these are terms you typically learn in multivariable calculus, and they typically are used in applied math. So I'm not going to go over too much like what these are and how they relate to the cross product and whatnot, uh, but I will go over how you can solve basic problems using these terms. So we'll start with this Kronecker delta because I think this one's a little bit more simple, simpler to visualize. So the Kronecker delta looks something like this, where you have an i and j here. And this i and j refers to the i and the j unit vectors, right? So if you have coordinates x, y, right? You would write this as x, y plus y, j, or x, i plus y, j, I mean, say. So this right here refers to this x term and this y term here, and that's basically what this does. And keep in mind, both the Kronecker delta and the Levi Civita symbol are basically just a new way of being able to visualize a cross product, if you're familiar with a cross product. Now, um, what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to basically show you how to calculate terms with this Kronecker delta. So there's a very simple rule. Uh, actually, there's two rules. First off, your i and your j value in the Kronecker delta, and this is the case with both of these, it has to be either 1 through 3. So uh, these values can only be 1 through 3. And um, uh, another thing that you need to know is that you're only going to ever have values if your i term equals your j term. So basically, you want to have repeating values down here, because if you do, then your delta is going to equal 1. Now let's say that you don't have a repeating value. What happens if you have two different values? Like if this were like a one and a two, or like a three and a four, or a one, or actually it can't be four, so a one and a three, or a two and a three, or something like that. But if it's any different numbers on bottom where the two numbers aren't repeating, then your delta is gonna equal zero. So this is the case right here for your term delta. Now, this is actually makes things very easy because let's say that I took your delta here and I asked you to sum over i and j of your term delta ij. So basically what we have to do is this has to be, remember, this has to be from a range between 1 and 3, right, for each of these i and each of these j terms. So basically we're going to go over all terms. And so in this case we would have, uh, we'd have delta uh, 1, 1, right, plus, and then we'd have delta 1, 2, uh, write that 2 a little better, plus delta 1, 3, and then it would be plus, and then we'd have delta 2, 1, plus delta 2, 2, plus delta 2, 3, plus, and then we would have delta 3, 1, plus delta 3, 2, plus delta 3, 3, right? Because both these terms have to be all combinations between 1 and 3. And you'll notice something. We get a repeating term right here. We get a repeating term right here. And we get a repeating term right here. All the rest of these are non-repeating. So all of these values and all of these values are just going to become 0, right? It's going to be a 0 there and a 0 there. So we're just going to have a 1 right there, a 1 right there, and a 1 right here, right? And so this 1 plus this 1 plus this 1 is just going to give you 3. So if you sum over all the deltas i and j, 1 through 3, you're going to end up with just 3, right? Uh, where these i, I and j's can only be 1, 2, or 3. So that's just kind of a quick introduction into the Kronecker delta, if you're curious about that. Now let's try the Levi Civita symbol, because this one's a little bit more complicated. So the Levi Civita symbol is, is, looks like this, where you basically have your epsilon, and you're going to have i, j, and k. The reason this is more complicated is because we now have this k term in here, right? So we factor for the x, the y, and the z, right? Because in this case, uh, your z term, you'd have xi plus yj plus zk, which we now need to focus on this term as well in the cross product uh, idea that we cover in calculus. Now, there's something that is kind of nice about this term, though, in that we actually really only care about six of the values. And let me explain why. So there's a rule for epsilon, right? And the rule is this. If i equals j, or if j equals k, or if i equals k, if any of those terms are true, your epsilon value is equal to zero, right? And in this case, that means that the only values that are going to have numbers are going to be situations where none of these values are the same. And there's actually a really easy way to get what those values are using something called cyclic permutations, and I don't know if I'm spelling this right, comment down below if I spelled that wrong, but uh, basically cyclic per permutations are what we can use to get these terms. Now I know that sounds complicated, but it's not too bad. Basically all you want to do is take 1, 2, and 3, and write this over and over again. So you're going to have 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, and 3, right? Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the first three terms, the first three terms right here, and you're just going to write those down, right? So 1, 2, 3, right? Now you're going to take the next three terms, right? The next three terms, which are these three right here, 2, 3, 1, and you're going to write those down. And then you're going to take the next three terms, right, which is going to be start at 3, so it's going to be 3, uh, 1, and 2, and you're going to write those down. So you have 3, 1, and 2. Now from here, now that you have these three terms written now, you, you're just going to keep these three terms right here. And now you're going to go from the back of your, of your numbers, and you're going to go start counting backwards. So in this case, you're going to go 3, 2, and 1, and you're going to just write those down, right? Because you, remember, you're counting from the back now, from the back four. So you're going to go 3, 2, and 1 right there. And then from here you're going to uh, shift one term from the back over and then count these terms. So you're going to have uh, 2, 1, and 3, right? 2, 1, and 3. 
And then you're going to shift one more term over. So in this case, we're going to shift starting at this three right here, right? And we're going to go that way. And actually, no, I made a mistake. Uh, I should actually have started with this one here, right? So it's going to be one, three, and two. So in this case, we're going to have one, three, and two. And then these are going to be your second set of values right here. Now, you might be looking at this going, why the heck did I just do that? Was that just for the fun of it? Was I just bored? Well, no, because these are the three values, right? Or these are the, the six sets of values, I should say, that are all going to give you um, values for this epsilon here. So if, you're, if your terms are any of these, right? If any of these are true, if th this is the pattern that these i, j, and k's make, then your value for epsilon is going to equal a positive one. Otherwise, if you get one of these three values, then your terms for epsilon are going to equal negative one. And this makes things super convenient because now we only have six terms we need to worry about as opposed to having 27 terms if we tried to write every single term for i, j, and k out and then try to figure out everything from there. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure things out. Um, so in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try a couple of examples using the Kronecker delta term and the Levi Civita symbol and see if we can figure out how to get this to work using what we've learned so far. Okay, so let's try these two examples written on the screen here. What is this thing going to equal right here if I sum from uh, with i and j, if I sum over i and j, I should say? Well, something that you might notice is that, remember, for delta, if we ever have a repeating term, this right here is going to be when your term equals 1. Otherwise, if it's anything different, it's going to equal zero, right? So if this is not true, then it's going to equal zero. Now, as for your uh, for your e i j k term here, your Levi Civita symbol, remember if you ever see a repeating term, right? So if you see like a one two one or a one one two or a two two one or a three two two, anytime there's a repeating number in this, it's only for three unique numbers that you're going to actually see it be a value. Otherwise, this is going to be zero. So if this is different, this is going to be 1. But then if this is different, this is going to be 0. Now, if this is the same, it's going to be 1. But if this is the same, it's going to be 0. So if we sum over every i and j term, we can't possibly have a situation where these two agree, right? Because if the numbers are different here, then this one's happy. It's going to equal 1 or negative 1, right? But if the numbers are different here, this one's going to be unhappy. It's going to equal 0, right? So now what if we made the numbers the same? Well, if we made the numbers the same, this one's going to be happy. It's going to be one. But now these numbers have repeating, so it's unhappy. It's going to go to zero. So there's always going to be a zero here, no matter what we have, no matter what the situation, there's always going to be a zero here. Now, anytime you multiply a term by zero, which we have multiplication here, it's going to equal zero. So no matter how we sum this, we're always just going to get a zero with these two terms, right? And we saw that from before. Whenever we had repeating, this one equaled one. But whenever something wasn't repeating, whenever it was one of those cyclic patterns that did not have a repeating term, this would equal one. But unfortunately, with this summation symbol here, we can never have agreement across these terms, which is why they, this will always equal zero. Now let's try something a little bit more complicated. So this time we're only dealing with the Levi Civita symbols, right? And we're trying this example down here. Well, the way we can do this is we can look at our ijk terms, right? And remember, we know that we're going to get zero, right? Because we're summing over all of these, and I should write down i, j, k. I forgot to do that, but we should, we're going to sum over all of these, right? So that means we're going to have patterns 1, 1, 1, then we're going to go 1, 2, 1, then we're going to go 1, 3, 1, then 1, 2, 3, and, we're, and it's just going to be this large amount of numbers. But remember, we had a rule. We had a rule for, uh, for cyclic permutations where if your values were 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, or 3, 1, 2, your epsilon was going to equal positive 1, right? And then if your values were... Uh, 321, 321, 213, or 132, your epsilon was going to equal negative 1. Now, you can go ahead and write these numbers down, or you can just use, I think it's better to use the cyclic permutations to calculate these, but you can write these down if you want to and just see that it's going to be negative 1 in the case of these terms here, or it's going to be positive 1 in the case of these terms here. Now, the reason this is helpful is because now we know all other terms are going to equal zero. So we only have six terms, right? One, two, three, four, five, six terms that we need to sum over. So we can go ahead and just do this. So in this case, we have e, one, two, three, right? One, two, three times e, one, two, three, plus, and then we have e, uh, two, three, one times e, two, two, three, one, right? And we have plus, and then we have e, 3, 1, 2, e, 3, 1, 2, uh, plus, and then we have, and now we're getting it over into these terms over here, so then we have e, 3, 2, 1, e, 3, 2, 1, and I keep saying e, I should be saying epsilon, that's my bad, uh, plus, and then we have epsilon, 2, 1, 3, epsilon, 2, 1, 3, plus, and then we have epsilon, 1, 3, 2, uh, times epsilon, 1, 3, 2, right, and then in this case, we know for these three terms, uh, this one, this one, and this one, these are all going to be negative 1, 
times negative one, right? Because this term's gonna become negative one and that term's gonna become negative one. And same with these terms here, we're gonna get negative one times negative one, and this term right here is gonna be negative one times negative one. But these terms up here are gonna be positive one times positive one, and then that's gonna be the same for these three. So positive one times positive one, positive one times positive one, according to what we identified here and here. But you'll notice something. One, negative one times negative one is positive one. Positive one times positive one is still positive one. So really, all we get is one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. And this is six one, so all this is is equal to six, right? And so this is gonna be the answer for this term, and this is gonna be the answer for this summation here. And that is a basic introduction as to how the levi civita symbol and the Kronacher delta symbols work, and there are a couple worked out examples for you, so hopefully this makes a little more sense.